Joining us here this morning, we're preaching a series, um, TLC, and you'll think, oh, what a loving pastor, a bit of tender loving care. No, uh, it's total Lord connection, and we need to make a, a very powerful connection in our minds about lordship. Um, I preached weeks ago that um, when we cry out to God for salvation, for a saviour, we don't only get a saviour, we get a Lord as well. And the word uh, saviour appears 38 times in the Bible, uh, which is magnificent. And um, I love it that we have a saviour. The word Lord appears 8,000 times in the Bible. And so clearly God is trying to communicate something to people all over the world about lordship and who is Lord. Amen? And uh, so he raised Christ from the dead and gave him a victory over death and sin to prove to us that he's the Lord. And he continues to minister today. And so I want all people, um, all believers, all Christians, um, to make a connection in their mind about lordship. What does it mean to me? The Bible keeps presenting this thing. Lord, Lord, Lord. Um, over and over again. And so we've been preaching a few things. It's such a huge subject. It's mentioned 8,000 times. You could spend the rest of your natural life looking at it. And, um, and so we're just trying to start some conversations amongst ourselves about uh, lordship and what it means. You know, in the Bible, Jesus says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you do not do what I say? And I think it's such a challenging... Jesus is sort of like borderline rude um, a lot of time, isn't it? He's like, he just, why do you do this? And you think, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, but he challenges because it's so important. And, um, you know, there are a lot of instructions that Jesus gives within Scripture. And um, we just need to take time out to look. There's lots of things we're instructed to do. We're instructed to, um, you know, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that he is a word. Um, and that's something that, you know, we as a church are um, believing for amongst all of our city. You know, that people will come to that place where they're like, Lord, um, you know, I need you and come to him. And so he instructs us to be baptised in water. He instructs us to take communion, you know, to, to, to nourish and feed ourselves on his memory. And not just the memory of what we read in the Bible, but the memory of what he's doing in our life yesterday and today and, and all of those things. And to keep connected with him, he instructs us on those things. Um, you know, he gives us very clear instruction um, on so many different matters. And so we just want to have a look at them uh, this morning. And uh, this morning's message is called um, Total Lord Takeover. Uh, Total Lord Takeover. Everyone say Takeover. Wow, say it with a little less enthusiasm for me. Ready? Everyone say Takeover. That's better. Um, Jesus wants to actually take over. Take over is such a hostile word, word isn't it? You, know, you hear about one company taking over another or one nation taking over another um, and um, it seems like you know such a hostile thing and in some sense I guess it is. Um, Jesus actually wants you know for such a full blessing to come into your life and such a strong health and such a strong vision for everything that he needs to take over. Um, you know, if my life was left just up to me, I, I shudder to think, um, you know, what I'd be doing right now. Um, you know, I can be lazy and selfish and, and probably some of you can feel the same way. But once Jesus begins to take over that setting of vision, setting of course, feeding my mind, you know, alerting... What a boring church that must be up there. Alerting my, I hope we don't see smoke coming out the windows in a minute, but that explains the screaming. Um, and so, uh, taking over and just setting the right course, getting us into our right calling. And so, I just want to have a look at a few things where we need to, you know, we need to, as God's people, allow the Lord to take over in our world. Is that all right? Yep. A few weeks ago, I, I gave 10 areas of our world that we need to surrender. Um, you know, or submit to him. So things that we have to uh, give, but this morning I'm speaking about things that we allow the Lord to take over. The first is this, if you're taking notes, our calling, our calling. Um, you know, you look at the response of the disciples. I wasn't there, but I read like you do what happened. Jesus walked along and he said to them, come and follow me. Um, the person recording it sort of describes it like when the, you know, they drop their nets 
and um, and follow him. I don't know exactly how that looked. I don't know if they put their resignation with their dad. I don't know if they literally just dropped their nets and followed him. Or I don't know if they were like, you know what, we're done. You know, we're done fishing. They put their nets down. They wound up their business and, and, and began to follow him. I, I don't know. The Bible doesn't describe too much detail. But the point is this, um, that he called and they followed. You know, he called and they followed. And there was um, just that commitment in their heart. And he needs to be Lord of our calling. Is that true? What are we called into? Because I just don't want to live out 60, 70, 80 years or whatever the expected life, the expectancy is for uh, you know, us. I want to step into the calling God has in my life. And I want to step into it now. You know, and so when you read about him inviting people to follow, it seems quite, you know, a sudden and a strong um, desire to follow him into whatever it was that he called them to. And you know, there's that, that setting apart. I remember reading in Acts uh, 13 that people were praying, seeking, fasting, doing all this great stuff. And uh, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I have for them to do. And um, it's like um, this incredible moment in the, their life and the time that they just set apart and all of a sudden things change and there's a new season and a new mission in their world and uh, it says for I have called them for I have called them and today church what I want to try and communicate to you amongst a few other points is that you are called there is a purpose and a reason for your life and Jesus will lead that so well he's such a wonderful leader and he provides our needs and he provides our breakthrough and he gives us assurance and confidence and certainty and he endows us with spiritual power I'm going to talk to you about that in a moment that we can actually say, you know what, I can drop my nets and I can follow him because he is going to set something in motion that is going to change my world and change the world around me. If that's how it happened for Saul, if that's how it happened for Peter and Andrew and different people, um, why should it be any different for us today? Why should the Lord not just sow a seed in our heart or a thought in our mind or someone prophesies over us or we have a dream or a vision or something, drop what you are doing and come and follow me. Some of us are in the wrong trade, I'm convinced. Some of us are in the wrong trade, I'm convinced. Some of us are in the wrong job, I'm convinced. Um, I know it. And, and even my own personal experience of being called, um, you know, it, it just, um, it happens so clearly, so suddenly, so quickly. Um, and it was like, I want you to stop this and do this. And I'll be honest with you guys, I would love to say I just dropped my nets. Uh, yes, Lord, uh, your thine obedient ser servant has heard thee. Um, it, it's not true about how it happened, but it was so clear. Um, and, and the problem that I had, and the reason I'm sharing my testimony is because you might uh, face the same problems. The problem I had was when the Lord said, I'm calling you to this, I was like, how can that possibly happen? How could that ever happen? It just seems so, um, I don't know. Um, you know, I'll tell you, I was working, and uh, my wife and I were both working, and the Lord said, I, I want you to shepherd God's people. I'm like, well, that sounds great, but I don't care about anyone really. <laughs> So that makes me think probably got the wrong person. Uh, and I don't want any stress in my life, you know, so that makes me think you got the wrong person. I don't come from a pastor's household, that makes me think you got the wrong person. I only just got saved, uh, you know, like a month ago, so that makes me think you got the wrong person. And so there were so many things that came up in my mind to make me think, um, this can't be right. This, I, you know, this can't be right, but there is a call. You know, uh, each and every one of us has such an important, world-changing, life-changing, community-changing, church-changing, family-changing calling on our life. Um, we have to address this. We have to address this. And, uh, and we can't just, you know, keep in the back of our mind, oh, I think the Lord's calling me, but I'm a school teacher right now, or 
or whatever. And um, and that's a great profession, by the way. You know, and 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 having trade is a great profession, and, and being a mum and, and or a dad and staying home with your kids is, is a great um, vocation and calling as well. But the point is this: a lot of things are great, right? But what the Lord wants, the Lord. Everyone say the Lord. <laughs> The Lord, what the Lord wants, um, you know, is for us to step into the calling that He has for us, not inherit the trade that our parents gave us, or uh, you know, the picture that society gave us. Some of you are probably called to the mission field, and you think, but how can that happen? I don't speak any other languages. I don't have any money, uh, you know, and all of that sort of stuff. I've got, I've got kids. It can't be right. But He's the Lord, Church. He's the Lord. I ran it's quiet here this morning. I just want you all to be very, very quiet. Um, come on. Are you with me, church? There are things that the Lord is calling us to. Uh, and we need to actually stop and address this situation. I knew this was going to be tough preaching this morning because everyone's in a groove, right? Everybody's in a groove. But I'm raising my kids right now, you know. Um, but I'm just halfway through my apprenticeship right now. But I'm halfway through my studies right now. But I just graduated and got the job of my dreams and all the rest of it. It seems to me that uh, although Jesus cares, he doesn't care. You know, although he cares about you, he doesn't care about the rut that you're stuck in or the, the pattern of living that you have or the life that you inherited from your parents. And so I just think, how rude. Coming up to these two guys, they're fishing, they're making a living, they're supporting their parents and everything else. He's like, follow me. And um, I'm like... Man, alive. Um, it's brutal. Um, but we've got to address this because he's the Lord. He knows what you were crafted for. He knows what doors he's going to open for you. He knows what's going to see the most souls come into the kingdom. He knows what's going to bear the most fruit in your life. He knows what's going to satisfy you more than anything else. You know, we, you know, it says uh, the man makes his plans, but the Lord directs his path. You know, we think, oh, that'll be a good job. And the Lord says, yeah, well, it isn't a good job, but this will satisfy you like nothing else. And so we've got to learn to um, deal with that calling. And so even though I was called, I think, man, I don't really care about people that much. Um, I don't know anything about leadership. I don't know much about the Bible. Um, all of these things came up in my head when I was newly saved. But um, by miracle, not through obedience, I would say, by miracle, I just began to plan and make steps. I put in my resignation. I can't say I dropped my nets and followed him, but I said to my current employer at the time, I'm leaving in six months' time. Um, and, um, and they said, what for? And I told them, they were like, yeah, what a great life choice. Um, <laughs> and other things that I shan't repeat. Um, you know, I started to get re prepared. I remember, like, after uh, just a few days, I started to look at where I could study or, or where I could be trained. You know, I didn't go straight away, but I just, in my mind, I thought, I'm going to be doing this. I need to resign my job. I need to start finding a place to, to be trained. I found a place to serve. You know, I just stepped out and, and found a place to serve. Um, and I'll just let you finish the story. Don't think, oh, what a hero, because um, I'm not trying to be one. But, um, you know... I just began to pray. If you feel there's a calling on your life, come to the prayer meeting on Tuesday night and just begin to pray with other people about the calling on your life. Because prayer helps you understand how God's going to break through for you. Because if God's calling you to go into business, you know, and to, to raise a lot of funds to equip churches and everything else, but you have no money and you have no business skills, that's a hard thing to hear, is it not? That's a hard, that's be the scariest thing for me. If the Lord said, I want you to go into business, I'd be like, oh dear God, I want to go to heaven. Um, I do not want to go through that. But some of you are called to that. Um, and, and so you just need to begin to seek and pray um, and also move by faith. You know, and there are things you have to do just moving by faith um, and, and all of those things. And so he is the Lord of your calling. It's not okay, in my opinion, to just... Be a Christian and live your own life. Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is okay to say, Lord, I'll follow you. Lord, I'll accept that you want me to become something that I'm not. Lord, I'll accept that you want me to leave the comfort of what I have and to join myself with something else. Lord, I'll accept the fact that I don't know how this can happen, but you're calling me to it. 
And so I, I would say to you that with a lot of fear um, and, and everything else, and don't be thinking that calling is about working in a church. Right? I'm just telling you about my story. Um, and, and I'm not saying it should be your story. But I was called to pastoral ministry, and, and you might be called to all types of different things, but it's very important to know in the Lord what it is that you're being prepared for. Um, he's the Lord. And if he's going to have a total takeover, that includes, even if you're in your middle years, right, in a good job, and you think, man, I've got a good run to retirement, the next 15 years I can make a lot of gold and everything will be fine, the Lord says, drop your nets. Drop your nets. You're hating this preaching, aren't you? Drop your nets and follow me. Uh, you know, what if God wants to turn you into something? You know, for his glory and for the benefit of those around you. He's the Lord of our calling. And it's a total takeover, church. He calls you. He sets you apart. He's like, oh, Barnabas, Saul, set them apart for me. I'm going to send them on the mission field. <laughs> it doesn't say what their response was. They said, what? <laughs> mission field? No, no, no. Um, but it just simply records that that's what the Lord's will was. And then we see it being outworked. It doesn't say they loved it. It doesn't say, you know, how responsive they were or whatever else. But what it does say is that the Lord can actually... And you think, how dare you, Jesus? How dare you just interrupt my life and say, oh, stop what you're doing. I'm setting you apart for another cause. Um, you realise that, huh? It's like the most full-on invasive thing ever. But he's the Lord. He's the Lord. He says, I'll rise up this nation. I'll do this in this person's life. He's the Lord. He's the Lord. I'll, I'll cut a path through for this person. I'll do something great in this church because he's the Lord. And so there's this incredible, um, you know, thing in Scripture where I would never have the audacity just to walk up to someone and say, you, leave school, follow me. You'd be like, yay, cheering. <laughs> but, but, you know... Beck, you've just become a nurse. You know, what if I was like, Beck, you've just done four years of arduous, gut-wrenching study while you're raising kids and everything else, and you've finally got a great job as a nurse, now leave it and come and do something else. You'd be like, what is going on? But clearly, this is the Lord. You read it over and over and over again that he just um, grabs people midstream, whatever they're doing, and says, you stop something new for you. Come follow me. Is that okay? So I'm preaching to you. You could be a grandparent in this house. You could be retired. Because retirement has a look about it too. Amen? Doesn't it? I'm going to say, I'm going to spend my retirement, my retirement. The Lord might say, you're not going to retire, you're going to get a job again. The Lord might say, you're not going to retire, you're going to start serving in a certain area again. And, um, and it's just this um, powerful capacity of God to um, just take over our calling. And I just want to leave you with this thought, is that what is he calling you to do? What is he calling you to do? What is he really saying? And, um, and we need to be responsive. We need to say, Lord, um, here I am. Lord, uh, it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be anxious. It's okay to be unsettled. It's okay to be offended. It's okay to have all those questions. But the point is this. God has a greater plan than any plan that you'll ever come up with. Um, and, and we need to say, hey, he's Lord of our calling. Second thing I wanted to, to just start a conversation around this morning in this total Lord takeover, you know, I'm just talking about the fullness. I don't want to live my own life and come to church on the weekend, right? Because that's not fullness. I don't want to do things my way, but then do a few things the Lord asks me. That's not fullness. What the Lord wants is to have full access to your world. And, uh, and we've got to just begin to think in terms of that. You know what? If I'm in the wrong job, studying the wrong thing, um, in the wrong church even, what if the Lord wants to take you out of this church and put you in another church? What, what, what if that's his will? And so we've got to say, if he's the Lord, if he's really going to be the Lord, if he's the Lord, then I've got to begin to be more active and say, what, what are you calling me to? You know, and we've got to start getting prepared and moving into that calling. And we've got to be people who drop their nets. You know, in your heart, at least, you've got to say, you know what, that it's broken today. The Lord's called me to something new today. And then begin to work that out. Second thing for the total Lord takeover, and this is an invasion that I've had happening in my life since, um, you know, being saved, is in the area of holiness. In the area of holiness. God wants to take over 
um, you know, that, that um, character part of us. He wants to take over um, the attitude part of us. He wants to take over, uh, you know, in our world, our decision making a lot of times. And, um, you know, we need help in that area. He wants you um, to be called, but he wants you to be cleaned. Is that good? God wants you to be called, but he wants you to be cleaned. And um, the thing about allowing God to take over that holiness um, in your life is that he knows exactly the right way to go about things because he's the Lord. I can look at my own life and think, oh yeah, this part of my life's a bit loose and this part of my life's not really God glorifying and, and all the rest of it. Um, but the thing is, God knows, because he's the Lord, he knows where everything stems from. You know that's important, eh? Behaviours are not important to me. I don't care what people's behaviours are. Um, what I'm interested in is how did that behaviour get there in the first place? And the Lord knows. The Lord knows. And some of us could testify that we've had healing in our life where the Lord showed us where something went wrong. Even when we were small children and something got into our world, into our mind, our heart, our attitudes or, or whatever um, and began to take us on a certain journey. And it's important to God. You know, a sin is important to God. Um, sin destroys people's lives. Sin destroys your life. It destroys those around you. It holds churches back and all those things. And so there needs to not only be a takeover of where is my life headed, my calling, um, but what should my life look like, my cleansing. And the Bible talks about sanctification and holiness and all of those things. Um, I'm not trying to do a study here this morning. I'm just trying to talk about the fact that we are called to be holy. Um, and so if God's going to invade our world, not just so that we can worship a bit, not so that we can preach a bit, um, but so that we can allow him to rebuild our life, um, holiness and cleansing is part of it. And I'm finding in my world that the armour of God, thinking about what my salvation means, what is true for me, about my faith and, and all of these different things is helping me. I'll share another testimony. When uh, we got saved, um, I was doing things that I didn't really realise um, God didn't like because God was not part of my world. Um, and so I gave my heart to him and, and I haven't got time to share about that, some of you might have heard about it. But all of a sudden I became aware that there were things in my world that were damaging me and damaging other people. Sin. <gasps> Sin in your life. My God. Um, and so I just went through um, this period, and, and my wife too, um, of this total takeover. I can say to you honestly, I burnt books. I burnt them. It was quite fun, actually. Um, any librarians here? Um, I had to go and burn some books. Um, that that were sinful, you know, that, that God didn't want to be any part of my life or anyone else's life. Um, I threw out music, albums and stuff, things that were singing about death, you know, and suicide and, uh, you know, <laughs> <don't>, <laughs> they're laughing, uh, they know what I'm about to say. And, you know, um, being uncooperative with the police and other things like that. Um, and all of a sudden, things that I thought were okay, that were normal, that were harmless, that not hurting anybody and all the rest of it, I became aware because the Lord was taking over my life. And I um, remember just breaking up CD after CD after CD. That was in the days of CDs, if you know what they are. And um, a few LPs. Women didn't probably never heard of that. Um, and and uh, you know um, objects. There was things in my house that I had to get out of my house. Um, pornography, you know, that, that I had in my world had to be gone. And um, so the fire was interesting fire, you know, CDs, objects, books, pornography, and everything else burning out in the backyard for a while. Um, alcohol. I remember emptying out alcohol. And, um, you know, it's okay to drink alcohol. 
Uh, you know, Jesus did it, and the Bible doesn't prohibit that. But um, for me, it was alcohol was about getting smashed, you know, on the weekend, just writing myself off and, and harming myself. And so for me, so I'm not putting this on to you, but for me, that had to be removed from my life. And so all, all of a sudden, in an instant, because he's the Lord, all this stuff's getting taken out of the house, burnt, destroyed, emptied out, tipped out, and gone, and all the rest of it. And that work hasn't finished. You know, even this year, I'm dealing with stuff in my life that God needs to clean out of my life. But he's the Lord, church. He's the Lord, and so he's okay to do that, right? He knows the way forward. He knows how it got in there. He knows how destructive it is. He knows all that stuff. He knows it's holding me in bondage, so I'm like... Clean me, Lord, you know. Let this cleansing keep, keep going. And I think sometimes in, in the life of believers um, that we believe, but for some reason we think it's okay to harbour things um, in our life. Uh, and it's not okay with the Lord, right? I'm not, I'm not having a go at you. I'm saying it's not okay with the Lord. And the Lord wants to, to clean things out of your life. Um, but we're not talking about it enough. We're not talking enough about our calling. If he's the Lord, he should be able to tell me to drop what I'm doing and start something new. Because he's the Lord, amen? And he's the Lord, so if there's something in my life that he doesn't like, that's not good for me, he's okay. He's the Lord. He can say, I'm going to deal with that. You need to stop that. I'm going to save you from that. I'm going to help you with that. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to bless you and equip you. And, and I'm going to do these things because he's the Lord. And, um, you know, I also remember not only getting rid of all those things, that there are situations that I had caused, right, in my 28 and a half years of living on the planet, that God needed to repair, because he's the Lord. And things shouldn't remain as sin and as brokenness, and so I had to go and apologise for some stuff, had to go and make some stuff right. Did I like it? No, I didn't like it, but he's the Lord, right? So it doesn't matter what I like, he's the Lord. I hate that bumper sticker. If you've got it in your car, here in the car park, go and peel it off. Uh, that says, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Have you seen that bumper sticker before? God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Settles it. What a lie that sticker is. It should just say, it should just say, God said it, that settles it. It doesn't say, uh, I believe it. It doesn't matter what you believe, right? The Lord said it. Well, if I believe it, that'll be right. And it's not the way. Uh, it doesn't matter. A lot of times we think, oh, yeah, you know, I know that the Lord doesn't want me to do this, but but I really believe, you know, yada, 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 that it's okay, blah, 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 and all the rest of it. It's not okay. He's the Lord. The Lord said it. That settles it. Doesn't matter what you believe. And so I know obviously there's a gap there where we have to understand those things. But so many times I think as as believers we manage to work out why things are okay and they're not okay. The Lord knows what is good for you. And if the Lord says, I want you to stop something, then that settles it. Amen? Doesn't matter about, oh yeah, you know, I just need to work that through. How's it all gonna work? What you know, is it really that bad? You know, and, and all that sort of stuff. And so I'm learning more and more um, just to allow God to cleanse me. And sometimes I don't even really understand why um, I'm needing to be cleaned up in an area of my life. But I just, the Lord is saying, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, okay. Um, and it becomes clear to me afterwards. Um, you know, you do a lot of damage to yourself and, and other people. And, um, and it can be sad looking back at your life and seeing the, the problems that you've caused for yourself and other people. But um, I use the word lucky. Lucky God is such a great healer. Amen? Lucky God is such a great healer. And when we give those things to Him, when we're like, Lord, you can cleanse me, you can heal me, you can change me, you can do all those things, um, you just, it's such a blessed place to be in to realize that you're being unburdened by the Lord. Um, I love the Lord. He knows the exact place you should be, what your calling is, and He knows exactly how He wants you to be. And, and your holiness probably looks different to my holiness and all that stuff. And I get that we're on different journeys, but I really love that. Um, I want to finish, and, uh, and I'm going to have an altar call. If you got our text out last night, um, you know, you, I, I did say that to you. Um, he's Lord of our calling. And we, you know, you could preach for a month on calling, right? But I'm just mentioning it today. 
so you can discuss it yourself and all the rest of it. What is important? What was I made for? What are the good works that God has been doing this season? Am I in the right job? Am I in the right church? Am I in the right place? Um, am I with the right people? Am I on the right team? You know, what am I called? Am I, do I need to, to quit some stuff? Do I need to move out of some stuff? What's my, what's my calling? And I, I think a lot of Christians get very frustrated around that area about what they should be doing. But the bottom line is this, that Jesus is a very clear communicator and you just have to drop your nets. You just have to put down what it is that you're doing and go and follow him. Second of all, uh, you know, not only is he Lord of calling, he's the Lord of cleansing. God wants to make you a healthier, more whole version of who you are. Amen? And if you think uh, holiness, yeah, I'm sick of hearing messages on holiness or whatever, um, I've got to say this. Who's attracted to Jesus? God just wants to make you look like that. And um, while we're all attracted to Jesus, that's kind of like the finished product. Can I, can I describe it like that? That's what it looks like when God invades a life. That's, that's what we will become when we allow him to cleanse us. So we all love the look of Jesus. We just hate talking about holiness, right? We all love the life of Jesus. We just hate addressing our stuff. And uh, what I'd say about holiness is everybody, you know, is just intoxicated and infatuated and, and just so in love and awestruck with how good Jesus is. And, but what you're looking at is a finished product. And God wants to move stuff out of your life and make you like that. The last thing I want to say is not only uh, is he Lord of calling, Lord of cleansing, um, but I really just uh, wanted to spend a few minutes and then minister you know, to each other um, and just uh, really talk about total Lord takeover uh, in the area of our filling. Uh, in the area of our filling. There is a, a baptism that I want to talk to you about this morning for just a, a little bit. Um, and again, same thing, you could preach for, for months and months on baptism in the Holy Spirit. But if there is a total invasion taking place, church, if there is a, a total takeover in our world happening, what is God's plan for that? What does it look like? And um, clearly within Scripture described to us is this um, great day at Pentecost where a feeling came into the lives of people and it changed them and, and some things manifest and they went from being weak to bold and uh, they went from, from hiding to being public and, um, you know, they, they went from being without any real power you know, to being able to exercise authority and power, there was a huge change that took place in their lives on that day. And um, if he's the Lord of our feeling, what can that look like for us, church? And, and we're not talking about it enough, about fullness and being filled and how we can get filled and how God wants to fill us with the power of his Holy Spirit. And uh, there's a lot of doctrines and theology out there, and, and I'm not doing a study on it this morning, and I know full well that people have their own views on all this stuff, and that's fine. You're my brother, you're my sister, um, we, we love each other, and all that stuff. But the point is um, that I want to address feeling this morning. Because I don't want people to be broken down and feel weak and feel without authority, feel, uh, you know, like they lack the presence of God in their life. I actually want you to be filled. Because the Lord wants you to be filled. And I know what it's like to be filled, and I know what it's like to not be filled. Um, and one is great, the other isn't. But for some reason, we, we have a, a thing in our humanness that settles for second best. And last week, I preached, you know, as best as I could, you know, about, um, you know, walking in the level that God has for us. Lordship, God has decided and desired something, if you like. And why, why walk underneath it when we can walk in it? And I really feel that for people today who are thinking, oh, when preachers start preaching about being baptised in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, I freak out. So that might be you today. And if it is you, you're in good company because I freaked out about it. I remember going to a meeting where they were going to baptise you know, people in the Holy Spirit and I was freaking out. And I was telling God, oh, no, no, not doing that. That's not happening in my world. You're not going to embarrass me. You're not going to do that in my life. I don't want to do things that I don't want to do. I, I had all, you know, I had this raging thing going on in my 
my mind about why I didn't want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and all the rest of it. Um, for probably no real reason but that it's just fear because it's something I don't know. It's something new. Who fears things new? You know, who just moves to another country and goes, oh, they're all cruising. Now you have anxiety. And being filled with the Holy Spirit can sometimes bring an anxiety to people's world. But um, God not only wants you to be called and cleaned, He wants you to be filled. And um, He wants you to know His presence. He wants you to fill your language up so that you can worship and edify yourself and other people in the church and, and, and communicate to God in more divine ways than what you've already known. He wants to give you an increase, but it's new, right? So, what's that going to be like? Uh, you know, to be able to have power um, in certain situations and circumstances to see how to, how God can unlock miracle working power is new and it's frightening and it can make us anxious. But I don't care. I don't care if leaving your job and, and being called to something new makes you anxious because I care about you, but He's the Lord. He's the Lord. You're not the Lord. He's the Lord. Um, and, and I just want to make that you know point as clear as I can. I don't care how many bad habits and addictions and everything else you have. God wants to cleanse you because He's the Lord. And so is it going to be painful? Yes, it's going to be painful. Is it nice having your sin dealt with? No, it's not nice. But He's the Lord, right? And we want to look like Jesus. We want to walk like Jesus. Living in us, but there are things that we need to give over to Him. John the Baptist came and he baptized people in water. There was a bit of a revival going on, and people were getting ready, and he was dunking them in the water. Um, but his message was After my time is finished, one is coming who's greater than me, and he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. And so, even though there was a revival going on, John was saying, This is not the revival, this is being prepared for the real revival that is coming later on. I baptise you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. The thong of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie, he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so um, John sort of began this work of, of dealing with people. He immersed them in water. John drenched them in water. But Jesus has come to drench us in the Holy Spirit. And there should be this, this real great um, blessed sense of fullness um, that God's Spirit is being imparted into our life and continually being renewed and, and divinely filled up in our life. Why, church? So we can become effective instruments here on the earth. Um, and so you might be called and cleaned, but there is definitely described in the Bible... Um, an experience where the Spirit of God becomes in your life, resides in your life, and all of a sudden they became effective. And some people argue, and, and I'm not getting into Bible study this morning, that when we get born again, when we get saved, and we get the Spirit. And Paul does talk about that. He says, when you when, when you were born again or reborn, we, you were all um, baptized into the one family, the one Spirit, Jew, Greek slave free and he goes on to describe it but I'm personally still convinced that Luke is describing something different on the day of Pentecost to what Paul is describing um, in his writings on there and so I believe there is a distinct um, and very needful feeling and um, what Luke's talking about um, is not the same thing as being born again or united with Christ you know that, that, that work that the Holy Spirit does when, when we're converted Luke is talking about something that creates empowerment, um, something that gives us divine power. Um, Paul wrote this, For by one spirit you were all baptised into one body, Jews and Greeks, slaves or free. And um, the context is talking about being united with Christ. And I believe that. When you become united with Jesus, saved, you, you have the spirit. Um, you get the Spirit. But let me just throw this out there. Does Jesus do everything all at once in your life? Do you get converted, adopted, saved, um, set free, blessed, healed, renewed, called, um, all those things all in one moment? I believe that 
Jesus takes authority for all those things all in one moment, but they happen during life. You know, I didn't get healed the day I got saved, right? But the authority of the one who would heal my life had come and was joined to me, so it's happening. But it didn't happen on that day. Um, I didn't get many of the things that I got on my day of salvation until after until they were revealed to me. I got the revelation and, and walked the walk and it was time, God's time. There are seasons for things. And so while we receive the Holy Spirit at our conversion, I believe that Luke describes a, a separate event that we can believe for and seek for um, to have fullness. Um, there's more than one work. You know, there's uniting with Jesus, but there's empowerment for ministry. And um, Jesus does more than one work in our life, church. And so I believe that the Holy Spirit also uh, wants to do, um, you know, a multi-layered work in our life. And I'd say my, my time is gone, and, and I will preach to you more fully and better on, on baptism and the Holy Spirit, you know, at another time when... You know, when the time's right for that. If you've got questions, I can give you stuff to look at. I can talk with you. I can argue with you. I love a good argument. Um, so, you know, that's fine too. And we can work through stuff together. But I just want you to know that you love regardless. Um, and that's important to understand. But what I'm preaching today is fullness. And I just believe there are people in God's house in this church that haven't understood uh, what fullness can look like and how it should work out in their life. And so I felt to make some time now this morning for us just to respond to God. Is that good? Who wants to respond to God? I always want to be responding to God. And so I know for a fact that there are people here in this meeting today who are frustrated with the direction of their life. You're calling. What am I meant to be doing? You could be 16 you could be thinking, what am I meant to be doing? You could be 67 think, what am I meant to be doing? Well, um, God knows. God knows what you are meant to be doing. But it's your choice to allow this total work of His to take place. God knows what you are doing, but it's you, you get to choose. You get to choose to say, there is a calling and I don't know what it is. I want to seek it today. So I just want to open up a little bit of time for you to come and pray and seek the Lord. There is, um, you know, a salvation and the blood of Jesus that sprinkled on the mercy seat cleanses us from all sin. You know, I'm so thankful today that uh, Christ's blood has paid the price for my sin. But, church... There is a cleansing that God wants to do so your sin doesn't keep holding you back and everybody else you know back and your church back and holding you out of the good things that God has for you because sin is destructive. That's why God hates sin. It destroys the plans and the things that He's made. And we've got to say, you can take that over this morning, Jesus. And it's good for you. If you've got sin in your life today, people will think you're just up here for calling. Isn't that good? Praise the Lord. We're all up here for calling today. No one's here, to, uh, you know, because there's sin in their world. And last of all, um, I, I just want to tell you about an experience. I, I got saved, you know, my wife and I, by the miracle power of God. And if you heard her testimony, you'll, you'll know about that. And it was an incredible miracle. And there was times of miracles and signs and wonders and everything was just so good. Um, everything was amazing and, and things were happening and all the rest of it. But... Still, at that point, I hadn't heard about and hadn't understood uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so even my own experience is that after even experiencing miracles and, and salvation and all those things, I still hadn't experienced, um, you know, that feeling, that feeling of the Holy Spirit. And that changed things again for me. And I've never been the same since then. And I even know today the Lord talks to me about the fullness that I received that day. Do I still have it? Do I need more? And uh, so even if you're like, yeah, I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, um, you know, sometimes you don't talk like it. Sometimes you don't act like it. And sometimes you don't think like it. So that tells me there's something not right. And so we can uh, deal with those things this morning. Jesus wants to, to not play religious games. And Jesus doesn't want us to come to church and 
dance and sing and all the rest of it. He wants to actually invade our world in an incredibly dynamic, healthy, positive and uplifting way in so many areas and we need to talk about it and get on board with it. Is that good? Why don't you stand with me?